Good morning, y'all. Good afternoon, y'all. Good evening, y'all. Welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. I had a little business to take care of, and I am glad that it is over with. I'm not too, um, you know, happy about whenever I'm going uh, to see the doctor or anything at this point. You know, you don't. I don't even want to go into places where I'm assuming that um, whatever they got going around could be. I don't give a damn, but I do. I stay masked up, whether it does work or not. Um, I just know I don't like to be in facilities where a lot of traffic is. So this was a, a you know, like I said, a procedure that I was the only person there. So I felt good about that. And um, I hurry up and got in and got out. So, um, I'm done with that. Anyway, hope everybody's day, uh, night, or afternoon is going quite the way you like it. Hope everything is going okay for you. But what I really want to talk about is, I want to know how many of y'all have saw the Showtime documentary called Attica. And if you haven't seen it, I'm going to suggest that you watch it. It's a very, very important piece of history. Um, I was about 10 or 11, about 11 years old when that happened. And I don't, uh, I just remember that it was a prison riot. I couldn't, some of the tangibles or, um, I remember my, my family being very upset about it. Okay. Uh, um, obviously, I think one of my father's friends had a relative or something that was in Attica, whatever. But the conversation around my house was, um, we knew, I knew it was a big deal. So I had to actually see the documentary to see how much this country has done a wonderful job of um, destroying black bodies and they don't really care if they take some white ones in our, in the interim uh they would rather save them but they really don't give a damn as long as they taken out a, a large percentage of black bodies um it it is the same program that we deal with today uh and if you haven't seen it it actually is a must see tv because it is actual footage. And I'm going to try to talk about it a little bit without giving too many spoiler alerts. Because it really ain't no movie. It's a documentary. But in September of 1971, um, some, you know, inmates took over the prison. And just like most prisons, and I know it's like in Wisconsin. Wisconsin... And a lot of other states have all these prisons that are out in rural areas where the people don't even have a high school graduate a, a diploma. They are the guards of the prisons, right? And the town pretty much feeds off the prison. It wouldn't even be a town if they weren't um, dealing with black and brown bodies. You get what I'm saying? So Wisconsin is full of Fox Lake, Portage. That's where Jeffrey Dahmer was. Um, all these towns. Uh, 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 oh, God. Jefferson. At, uh, all these state prisons. Fox Lake, if I didn't say that. Um, Green Bay are small white towns and the biggest source of their income is the folks working in the damn prison. So that's where it was in Attica, New York. Because nobody, if you ask somebody, did you know anybody live in Attica? I don't know about now. But it was a prison town. Right? So, which in itself is already fucked up. Because you think your family member have a job, but your family member got a job because they're keeping people 
uh, all the people, the, the, the uh, uh, um, sheriffs, I mean, all the prison guards look like you. And then the, all the inmates look like me. And y'all don't see nothing wrong with that picture. Oh, and that is so disturbing. That you actually have communities that operate like this. And then it's them, and they don't have not a clue to what it is to even be around a city, urban individual, black or white for that matter. But then you put them in these damn towns that they only mechanism of income is to uh, work in the prison. So anyway, the, 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 the inmates were, were complaining about the conditions in the damn prison. And I hope y'all, if you don't watch nothing else, watch it. Nothing else. It's a, it's a holocaust. That's what I'm going to say. That's, it's, it's a holocaust of black bodies and Puerto Rican bodies. I just can't. Um, anyway, they took over the prison. They were, they, you know, there was a, there was no observation of their religious practices. If they was Muslim, they was made to eat pork. They didn't give a damn because they grew pigs out in the back. The, it, the conditions were just atrocious in the prison. Okay, with the all white guards. Matter of fact, you couldn't even talk to the guards. They'll pop you. When they hit the stick on the ground one time, that means yes. If they hit it twice, that means no. Stupid shit like that because they were all white. They wasn't used to dealing with predominantly, um, you know, like I said, black and brown bodies. So they had this arrogance and this pompousness about themselves that, it, that, that was messed up if you had to be under their control, right? Okay, so what happened was, in this day in September, this Lily White prison, <laughs> uh, state prison, with all these black inmates, there was an uprising. And they had hostages. I think they had like 12 hostages, and or it was more than 30 hostages, maybe, I think. If I remember correctly, I don't know, but here's the deal. It was more than 30 hostages. Um, and what they did was they came out of the prisons, okay, because the, they wanted to demand, they wanted to let you know the conditions and that they couldn't take no more, right? So don't forget, they don't they don't have any weapons. They have knives, they probably got some pipes and they got little things like that. But in terms of guns and things like that, no. Um they did apprehend some prison guards. Those were the hostages, right? Now, uh, it was good to see uh, William Kunstler. I, I, I had this, you know, he's gone. He's done a lot of uh, work um, for black people. And um, it was good to see him in the documentary because he is in there. And this is actual footage. Anyway. It was amazing that this this went on for five days, okay. Um, and what I enjoyed about the documentary was that you saw that there was black, white, Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, that no matter what their relationship was before this uprising, they realized that they were all inmates. And so they had to let go of all that isms and schisms and that separation if they wanted to actually change the conditions of their lives, right? So um, it, that's what they did. So when they were out there, they built these trenches, okay, so they could use the bathroom. A lot of them had took their experience from Vietnam um, and made it work on the outside because they got themselves outside and they were all out in the yard. All right, they build trenches, took their mattresses out, and you know, whatever. Anyway, they asked for the prison official because they wanted to talk about their demands. First of all, they wanted complete amnesty, okay, for what they had done, okay, which at that point wasn't nothing but taking over. And they said they were forced to do that because of the conditions. They said we're we're not criminals. We're not vi we're not uh, 
violent criminals. We don't want to die. We want to talk about the conditions here that we cannot um, tolerate anymore. And we had to go to drastic measures to get the attention of the state. So this was what their mantra was. And they had they very, they articulate, they, the guy they put out front, he articulated their um, demands, you know, very precisely. So anyway, <coughs> for a while, the official came in and he listened to him, you know, and he said that they were going to do this and they were and, and they would meet their demands. OK, so this was day one, day two. However, um, the negotiations were going, actually, the, the negotiations were going. I can't say they were going really good. Right before that, something happened that made, you know, I'm a little apprehensive. But, but as far as negotiations go, they were going pretty well until the hostage, one of the hostages died. Okay, so that was their leverage uh, being removed. So uh, you already know uh, when Charles, his name was, he was the, uh, the guy, Charles Quinn, you know, that he died. So they knew they still had to stick together because now the official was saying, you know, since this person died, we don't want to talk to y'all no more at all. Pretty much is what happened. Um, so by day four, they was already talking about, you know, we're going to come in there by force and we're going to do X, Y, Z if y'all don't surrender, if y'all don't do this. And they was like, well, listen, we still, because at first I think that they were going to meet a few of the demands, like maybe 28 of, of 30 other demands. But by day four, they cut the water off. They done all this stuff to the inmates. And I want y'all to, um, like I said, I'm not going to give away too much of it. Um, there are some scenes in that movie, and I don't understand why anybody could not think that we were, weren't were carried to a slave ship. Because the way they did those inmates was just like they were on their way to a slave ship with their hands over their head. The only thing that was missing was the chains and uh, around their arms. Uh, the part I wanted to discuss now, after they, so on day five, the inmates, the ones that survived, that are here to tell us the story, said they thought they were going to come in with rubber bullets. Not a chance. Richard Nixon is all behind in this. You know, uh, what he think he's a racist. He was a racist, crazy bastard. Um, and he's in there saying what he thinks should happen. I wish I, I hope I got somebody out here that was alive like that. Maybe there was a kid like me when that went on. And this, this documentary opened your eyes up. Cause I do got some mature listeners out there. So I want y'all to put your comment down. If you have, if you've seen it, if you remember it, like I did just in bits and pieces, and now how it really happened. This shit blew me away. How they made the men. Okay, now after they did all this carnage, it wasn't no rubber bullets. They used real bullets to shoot those damn prisoners down. Blood everywhere. Just, just. And now they talking about the guys in hindsight talking about, uh, yeah, the, the 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 guards were overworked. Some of, I mean, the the police on the outside, they were tired. And should we have went in and did that? Yeah, I think we made a big mistake because all these years later, now, right? Okay. What's really interesting is one of the inmates said, you know, on day five, they knew something was wrong because it had rained all night long. And in the rain, I said it was a different feeling in the air. Just you know, remember, he had took the beds out and everything, so this rain kind of messed it up for him. So now they cold and they shivering, and you know, uh, it, 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 it the conditions were 
very bad. So it's amazing to me that the powers that be in that state, they didn't care about anything but killing those black men and Puerto Rican men. They didn't care anything about killing those inmates. That's all they cared about. Once that uh, person died, um, and it wasn't that he died because they beat him or whatever, you know, it was the panic. It was all of that that was involved in him being part of the hostages. He was the one that passed away. Okay. All negotiations were off. And they decided to make it a bloodbath. So not only did they kill all those people. And they actually have the footage to see what they did. And one, I think one of the most saddest things is one of the guys that was part of the shooting of the inmates said that the commander told them that day. He said, you saw things here today that were excessive and that were wrong. But you can't, I don't want y'all to discuss this with anybody because nobody's going to understand but us what we had to do. You know, if people had known what happened, what really went down in there, it would have been, in my opinion, an uproar all across the country. It was just George Floyd 2.0. And how long, it's amazing that we have to go through this before we spend our lives Understanding that that nothing is more important than some kind of solidarity between um, poor people, black people, brown people. Because when the chips is down, that's the only thing you got. Now, other than that, you have your clan. That's it. And as they showed you in this thing today, in that movie... The carnage that they were willing to put off on black people as well as white folk. It was so wrong. They made them run through glass. They took pains. I'm going to tell you. So now after they just shot them all up, I'm going to tell you how just evil. How evil vests in the heart of these, rests in the heart of these men. They had already killed enormous amount of them shot them all with shotguns there was no rubber bullets it was real bullets blood everywhere they had one big black man now they playing with the bodies put they had the biggest one they called him big black something and they put a football under his neck throw cigars on him uh butts on him and tell him if he moved they're gonna blow his brains out now all this is after the carnage this is what the soldiers and them decided to do you know how they did when they went into that um uh, uh, you know how they add the extra, like when they rush the um, White House. I mean, uh, um, con- you know, the Congress when they rushed it. Remember how they doodled all on the floor and did all that kind of crazy stuff. This is like a mindset that is so sick. It's like, uh, you know, the torture y'all do is 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 it's insane. It's like some people that are so in- psychotic. So you done made these people run over glass that you took out the window pane, crushed it all up and laid down, made them get stripped down butthole naked so you could stick the poles of the posts up in their butts. So you know, none of these inmates had weapons, remember? They was raping them with the uh, 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 post, the uh, night sticks. Listen, please, if you have it, Watch Attica. And then let's talk about it again. I so much want to talk. I want to do a live stream with this. Probably over on Patreon. However. That's. It depends on. You know. What y'all think about it. Please. Please watch it if you haven't. It's on Showtime right now. It's called Attica. Now I don't want to talk too much about it. Because. That's about. 
all I can do without getting too graphic about and all the spoiler alerts. But watch it. It's one of the best documentaries I've saw in, in 2022 so far. Starting off. With that being said, if you like what you hear, please subscribe. Like the channel. Uh, hit the notification button so you can be um, reminded and notified whenever I drop a video. I will see you in the next one. And have a wonderful, wonderful day.